Well, some of you have mentioned that I haven't really given a topiary tour recently, so I thought that I would. Today I'm working in the garden, everything's kind of in a state of disarray, but I want to show you how much growth a lot of these topiaries have put on and how I'm having to relocate them, move them around the garden, and kind of stage them in other areas so that they get enough light uh, as the sun heads further south in the sky as winter approaches then they all are chasing the sun i've said that before but i want to show you how beautiful these myrtles look this one in this faux bois container Stuart, if you can kind of do a close-up of that this started out as just three small topiaries and they've grown together gotten very very dense and i love this kind of triple lollipop shape that it's assumed and I keep it pretty well pruned. And likewise, this one was just kind of in an irregular form and I just gave it a smooth kind of gumdrop spherical top. Maybe that's not gumdrop, but kind of a flat headed top and it looks beautiful and all of these really are a little bit more substantial now. I've wanted to have larger myrtle topiaries for quite a while and I think I'm finally getting there. Amazingly, I have two lemon cypress that made it through the summer in this shadier protected area. There's one there and this one over here. And you can see that they're starting to take on a little bit more of that lemon hue and the scent is really wonderful. So if you can, if a lemon cypress topiary can make it through an Oklahoma summer, that's always something to celebrate. And then you see that I've got three other topiaries. This one, by the way, these are all myrtle topiaries, myrtle compacta, I believe. And this one I bought in its topiary form, but these two guys, I started from little cuttings that my friend Monica rooted for me. So both of these are beautiful. And then this one turns into a, a double ball. So these, these guys have been extremely happy this summer. I'm very pleased with the way they have managed to survive the heat and the drought. So now come this way. And by the way, uh, for those of you who may just be joining the channel, these are Green Mountain Boxwood topiaries, these massive topiaries in these pots. These have been here for four or five years and these stay out all winter. And these are Green Mountain Boxwood. And then let's head this way. Lots of work going on out here in the garden today, but these and before i forget this plant stand i'll try to put a link below this is a terraced plant stand it actually comes in three parts and the other two parts are still on the porch this is what was just outside my back door but i've relocated it here so that they can get some more sun this by the way is a standard myrtle that's often used as a hedge plant. Um, and you can see the difference in the size of the leaf and, and in how large it gets compared with this smaller uh, myrtle compacta. And this right here, I wish, I wish you guys, I had smell a vision So you could smell how wonderful this lemon verbena topiary is. It's really coming along. This one I just started from a cutting this year and it's happy. And then you can see I've got all sorts of other little myrtle babies getting started. This one I'm trying to do kind of a, a twisted form. And one thing I have learned is you really need to start out with an oversized, uh, really long dowel at the outset because otherwise then you're having to replace one that's too short with the longer one and that can sometimes stress the plant. So I try to put in a very long support at the beginning. Um, and here is another smaller form of 
uh, uh, the same version of this regular myrtle. These I got, they kind of started out in this form, and I got these at Bustani Plant Farm in Stillwater, Oklahoma, but you can easily take cuttings off of a hedge. I've done it many times, and you can create some pretty large topiaries pretty rapidly. Then down here, Again, I started these from little starts. I've got some germander balls. These require really frequent clipping, and they need lots of sun. Um, really, all of these topiaries want lots of sun, and that's how you get a lot of density in the canopy and fullness. And if they're in too little light, then they tend to start getting stringy and the inside tends to open up. So I've got some other small ones here. This year I have just become obsessed with this tall skinny form. It's a little bit conical at the bottom, but it's very tall and skinny. So I've started doing some in that way. And in this case, it was really imperative that I use a very, uh, very long straight stick. And then, Stuart, if you can do a close up on those tiny, I call them just little hair clasps, hair claws, you can get those from, I think you can probably get them at Walmart or something. I got these online. And if I think about it, I will try to put a link I think I got these from Amazon. So you can see it's just, a, they're a little happy family here. And even though they're not staged exactly as I would have them staged during a garden tour or something, they definitely are in a happy place. Then over here, I've got, you can see we're getting ready uh, for Halloween around here. So this will be all prettied up and styled better soon but I've got some gorgeous rosemary topiaries. Again, this is that form I am just smitten with, that real tall, slender, conical form. And this guy here, a double ball, and these need some trimming. And I will do that pretty soon. And they had a little bit of a sign of spider mite, so I had to give them some insecticidal uh, soap spray. Now these I, I did start from cuttings from my friend Monica on LVTV. We did a really long segment on how to grow cuttings so you can subscribe to LVTV uh, or I think I've also talked about lots of trimming of topiaries and what kinds of plants I like to use for topiaries in previous in my topiary workshop that's also up on YouTube so you can look at that. And then and finally over here, excuse the changing light conditions, I've got a couple of really large rosemary standards that again I grew this one I believe from a cutting years ago. It's very happy. And then this one, I'm not really sure what I want to do in terms of styling the top of this one. But I like the way it looks. This one is throwing out a little, um, a little blue flower. And then this one, I'm moving too fast for Stuart to keep up with me. Look at this one. This is, I believe, Spice Island. And this started from a cutting, a small, relatively small cutting just this year. And look, it has all sorts of flowers on it. And it's gotten kind of wild. I need to retrain it onto this wreath form. But it, I don't know. I kind of like the way it looks. Really wild there. So I have let it do its, its own thing. And I've got more topiaries in the back. Um, there's a Eugenia topiary there. You can see in the back some of those Silverado Sage ones that I have showed you. Um, when the light conditions are a little bit better, I'll show you those in the back. I do want to show you this beautiful distillium. This is a Southern Living plant. And I love the way it's been transformed. It almost looks bonsai. And look at that wonderful trunk. It reminds me of a baobab tree from Africa. We went to Africa on our honeymoon, and I love the way the roots look and how the trunk looks. I think it's absolutely fabulous. And then the canopy, 
or the foliage, I just opened up a little bit. So I think it's got a bonsai look. I love it. I think I'm going to do a video on how all of the southern living plants are doing in my landscape and which ones are my favorites. And definitely this distillium is one of my favorite. They've got a couple of varieties and I just love the way this looks. So there is, oh wait, let me, I'll just wrap up over here. Um, this is one of those blue point junipers that the birds planted and I just transformed into a topiary. I've showed this before, but look at how much size it's put on just this year. I was looking at pictures from last year's garden and really great reason to record your garden photographically frequently because it's amazing how much things can grow, especially in a wet summer like ours. Unfortunately, now it's getting very dry. It's a very dry fall. But these over here also, this Eugenia, triple Eugenia that I've had for years, it was in too much shade and I relocated it over here to kind of a semi shady situation and it makes a wonderful vertical punctuation, especially in front of, I think, these other topiary forms, these spherical wintergreen balls and then the juniper in the back. So for those of you who asked if I would give you a little topiary update, that's how at least a number of them are doing in my garden and how they've had to kind of go on vacation themselves from one part of the garden to the other part of the garden. I hope you guys get to take some kind of autumnal vacation yourself.